Welcome back to the second part of our video presentation on early learning within Holy Spirit Catholic Schools. We, in the first series, we, we looked at professional development and the, and the critical nature of professional development within the, within the programs. During this section, we're going to take a look at the actual structure and how, how the programs are designed to be the, the best learning play-based environments for young children. Within Holy Spirit Catholic Schools, um, we have a, a central, centrally based um, early learning team, which consists of myself as the early learning coordinator, two speech language pathologists, as well as a lead teacher who as, um, assists in, in developing and providing program for our pre-kindergarten programs. The frontline staff is, is the most important part in, in, the, in the entire program. We have, in each program, we have a, a um, early childhood educator who, is a pro, who we ter term as a program leader. She is essentially the teacher of the program. Every program also has a speech language assistant who is, who is supervised by, by our speech language uh, pathologists and she, she looks after um, providing support for children who have mild to moderate um, program needs. Finally, we have dependent on need. We have educational assistants who provide support and facilitation for children with more severe support needs. These, um, the assistants help these, these children to be the most successful and, and really it's their job to work themselves out of a job. We want to move children towards independence and we want children to be interacting with their peers and not with the assistant that, is, that has been assigned to, to um, support them. Long before children arrive at school in September, the, the process has already begun. We, we are really in, feel it's important for, for universal screening to occur so that we know prior to the children coming through who needs support, um, is, there, is there additional support that we need to put in place and, and is there anything, anything else that we should be aware of so that we are ready when the child comes through the door. We really feel strongly that the child sh shouldn't have to wait till he's ready or she's ready for the program. The program has to be ready for the child when they walk through the door. And screening prior to is, is really a critical part. We're particularly lucky here in Lethbridge. We have a, a collaborative partnership with the health region, the school jurisdictions, as well as other, other partnering professionals that provide um, universal screening using a tool called Ages and Stages. And the Ages and Stages is, is um, a tool that, that gives a rough overview of, of where the children are, are in terms of their social development, their motor development, their language development, um, as, well as, as well as their, their um, fine motor development. If something, um, if something comes up as, as being a, a perhaps a, a reason for further investigation, during those community-based screenings, we can re make referral to the health region directly. So uh, if a child needs uh, support with their large motor movement, we'll, we'll make, um, make a referral. If their language or their speech is, is seen as being perhaps not not developmentally where it should be, then we can we can further investigate that as well. And this just this just gives us all the information we need prior to the child beginning school. Within Holy Spirit schools, um, we have orientation um, in the in this in the spring of the year. Um, of course. You know, coming in to do to do a little a little test is, is is so boring, and so we've decided that that we would term the have the uh, orientations have a theme, and so we have pirate days, 
where every child who's registered to attend this um, program with us in, in the, the following September, they and their family are invited to come and do some a lot of really fun um, pirate type activities, I mean, do crafts, and they even get to walk the plank. And of course, um, all of the adults are dressed up as pirates, and it's 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 a really fun day. But one component of that day is completion of a, of an assessment, a standardized assessment called. Kaufman's Survey of Early Academic and Language Skills. And this, pro, this will give, gives us some deeper information, and especially for, for parents who, who choose not to go to the ages and stages um, checkup. It gives, us, it gives us an opportunity to, to look a little deeper. The really nice thing about doing it during the orientation phase of, of the day is that the parents are there with the child. So if a child is, is, is shy or if they, if they, for whatever reason, are not comfortable going with a complete stranger who looks like a pirate, go figure, um, we would be, we have the parent right there. And the K-Seals is, is a very quick um, assessment that gives us some really good information and it can be scored and reviewed with the parent right then. So there's no there's no questions and there's no leaving, oh I wonder how I wonder how Susie did with whatever. So we can review and explain to them what, what the scores mean and and if there's additional support that we can provide for for whatever whatever reason, we can have that conversation with the parents right there. And so it, it really helps to alleviate a lot of parental concerns, but it also gives us a, a, a good opportunity to um, have a very clear idea of what and, and what we need to provide in each program for the upcoming school year. Program, program delivery and program structure is really, is really built in, on a, a pyramid of supports and, and interventions. So on our pyramid, at the bottom of the pyramid, um, we have universal supports. So that's what every child receives when they come through the door. Regardless of, regardless of, everything, of anything, that's what, that's what they receive. This component of the program was developed by myself and, and our speech language pathologists. And it's really a literacy based um, program where each week there's a, a book that is the book of the week. And so all the activities and, and all of the games and songs will come out from that book. And it also gives an opportunity for multiple readings and, and um, which is really an important part of emerging literacy skills. Also in the universal, in the universal supports are, are gym programs. We have access to the gyms in the school, we have access to the libraries. So within the universal supports, everybody, everybody is provided with that, that component. The next piece on the pyramid would be targeted supports. So those would be the children that, that might need a little bit of extra support in developing their language, social skills, motor skills. And that component of the program is, is, individually, is individually established and individually based. The, the thing to remember is that, is that development, particularly in the early years, is definitely a continuum and some children are going to develop and some children are going to to reach milestones at different paces and that's perfectly fine and that's that's something when we when we sit down and we and we talk with parents that's something that we really want to reiterate to parents is that is that this is not this is not something to to be panicked about but we have these resources it's fun and and we can we can provide that extra little bit of, of, of support um, so that the child is better able and better ready to move on to the kindergarten environment when the time comes. At the very top of the pyramid is our specialized support services. Um, specialized and the specialized support services within the programs would be a, would be a very small segment of, 
of the population. Again, these, these are children who, who really need um, a lot of support in, in facilitating their, their actions in, throughout the day. But although, although they, they need that, that extra support, we've really moved away from um, it being a pull-out, um, go to another room to work on whatever their goals happen to be, into, into a place where, where they're in the program, they're with their peers, they're with other adults, so they're not only responding to the one adult who, who may be assigned to, to that child. Um, this, this change in, in program delivery um, occurred probably about four years ago and it was really a kind of a painful process for the educational assistants who were used to coming in and saying, okay, which child is my child? And so, so we kind of strategically were evasive with the assistants so that they got to know all of the children. They got to know the needs of all of the children. And so everybody, every adult in the program was supporting the needs of that child. It was also an interesting, an interesting development with parents as well because parents in the past would seek out the educational assistant. Now they, they seek out the teacher who, who has that more global view of, of, how, of how Johnny's day went and puts less pressure on the educational assistant to, to answer um, what may be very specific and very difficult questions to, to answer. I think one of the most important questions we can ask at this point is why does any of this matter? Why is early learning so important? The early learning opportunities creates the foundation for later learning. Children who have successful and, and positive opportunities and interactions in, in their early stages of life tend to have more success down the road and, and tend to, to be the ones who, are, who complete high school and, and move on to, to other opportunities. Um, adult to adult, child to child interactions are critical and positive interactions are critical. Children need to know and, need, and some need to learn how to, how to make those, those social interactions a positive and, and enjoyable thing for them but also for, for the peer or adult that they're, that they're, that they're reciprocating with. And so, so teaching children to be uh, effective communicators is going to serve them for the rest of their lives. Early learning and positive opportunities is particularly, particularly important for children who are maybe, maybe living in, in situations where they're, where they're vulnerable. So children who, who are living in poverty children who are, ex are experiencing violence in their home, children who, who may not have the opportunities that, that, we, that we really wish and want all children to have. Those children having a positive early learning experience can help to mitigate some of the negative, negative vulnerabilities that, that, that they have to deal with on a daily basis. And finally, this is the generation that's coming up. We want them to be the most empathetic, the best skilled, and, and, the, and the, most, the most socially conscious of any of, of the generations that have come before. And early learning plays a part in that, in that development. If you would like any further information on early learning programs within Holy Spirit Catholic Schools, please feel free to contact me, um, email at michelle.mckinnon at holyspirit.ab.ca. I think when we work together, we really have a more powerful voice because our children truly are our future. <laughs>